Hey, how's it going? So, I've had quite a few requests for me to do a video on the Winterfrost Player Home. Now, seeing as this one looks a little more interesting than the other homes uh, being sold on the Verified Creation site, I thought, why not? The house, once occupied by an old orc, Winterfrost stands on a glacier amidst the sea of ghosts. The home lies dormant, awaiting for someone to pay 600 credits for PC and Xbox and 500 credits for PlayStation. And the extra 100 credits paid by PC and Xbox players apparently gets them an enhanced experience with new assets and audio, available exclusively with a plus edition. It's in a beautiful but cold area of Skyrim, being quite close to the dainty slowed, but luckily for us it supports survival mode. You start the quest by going to the Winking Skeever in Solitude and reading the mercenary's notes found on the bar. Read the notes and make your way to Liar's Descent, which is located on a small island next to the Dainty Slode. Head on into Liar's Descent. Now it's quite dark down here, but luckily there's a spell tome for candlelight on a table, definitely worth using. And once you've got that all lit up, uh, keep on heading down till you come to a closed door. With a fair bit of loot, so grab all that, making sure you grab all the replicas as well before you head on. Uh, might as well explore all the tunnels as there's a hidden chest and a couple of places you can uh, mine gemstones. Once you've done that, head on down to Glacial Cave where you'll meet a couple of Wisp Mothers. These are the only dangerous enemies you'll meet in this quest and they can be a bit of a handful if you're at a lower level, so take care. Now make sure you search this area as you can pick up a Dragonbone Longsword no matter your level, so definitely worth grabbing. Head on down and out to the cave to a workbench where you can build a rowboat. Now this will allow you to fast travel close to solitude docks. You don't need to do this, but if you do, it allows you to do exactly the same from the map in the home. So you might as well do it while you're here. And once you've done all that, uh, run back into the cave and take the ladder up to the house itself. Okay, so we're at the house itself and I'll show you a couple of things you need to do before I do a walk around. Uh, first is you need to shovel the snow from the front door. And once you've done that, you can go in and the house is yours. Once you're in, you'll find a candlelight spell tome on the table. So grab that if you don't already have it and use it as it's very, very dark in here. Now you'll want to interact with all the lights and turn them on. There's ceiling lights, candles and lanterns on the floor all over the house. And when you go into the trophy room, you not only have to turn on the lights, but also interact with the building supplies dotted around to create your displays. Now, don't worry, you don't need any building supplies. You can also turn the fire on and off in the kitchen and remove and add some wall mounts as to your taste. And lastly, we come to the bedroom where you can interact with a book on the table and read the notes beside it to change the walls and flooring. And beside the table is a little basket where you can change the color of your bedding. So that's a house all set up. Let's do a little walk around and see what we got here. So right off the bat, we've got a fire pit in the middle of the courtyard, which you can turn on and off. And really, basically, this is all our smithing stuff, but it's a very pretty little cottage. Grindstone workbench, some storage. I don't think really there's enough storage, to be honest with you. Archery barts, and you've got eight growing spots. And you've got the forge itself. In the corner you've got a chicken coop with dead chickens. I've been actually reading elsewhere that most of the chickens people get here are dead, um, which is a shame. You've got a chopping, chopping block and a tanning rack. And in the corner is your smelter. 
and going around the edge of the house is a little walkway all the way around which is uh, gives you some beautiful views so anyway into the house itself and inside we've got that map I was telling you about where you can go um, fast travel near the solitude docks it's actually nice to decorate a few little plant pots here as you see I've put uh, some plants in kind of pretty And some cupboards and weapon racks and blah 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 and the wall mounts there you see you can add them or remove them um, according to your taste the ch kitchen area is really nice has all the facilities a butter churner oven obviously cooking pot and we go into the trophy room now the replicas you picked up uh, before I, I was thinking that was a bit unnecessary but on further reflection, it uh, actually makes sense. For example, the Nightingale bow, you might actually want to use that, but still have it on your display room, or in your display room, sorry. So you can display it and still use the weapon, which is actually a really good idea. And going around here, you've got a lovely little fireplace. The butter churn is a good thing to make garlic bread. And if anyone's seen my uh, uh, cooking in Skyrim video, uh, you know garlic bread is definitely worth having. Get out of the way. And we go into the bedroom. And you've got your alchemy, enchanting, uh, loads of storage. And that's pretty much all there is to the house. It's actually fine. This is a great little house. Um, but there are a few issues and uh, I'll just go into that now. Now, all the shots you've seen here are in lovely weather and this place is really beautiful. But for the sake of making my videos, I use a mod to control the weather and in good weather this place is really pretty calm and peaceful and a great place to be apart from the wind being constant and a bit loud however this is actually what it's been like every single time i came here and not changed the weather myself it's snowy windy and dark and it's quite an unpleasant place to be doing a long crafting run on the forge so just be aware of this before you buy so what do i think of this mod well i think it's a great little play home it's not too big and not too small it covers all your crafting needs storage and a decent trophy room i actually think it's great it's not so great being outside with uh, the bad weather but maybe i've just been unlucky you also get a pretty decent sword and an even better amulet. So all in all, I really like this place. Uh, it's much better than some others being offered for similar money, uh, for sure. But is it worth 600 credits? Well, that's up to you to decide. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you later. Love you.